Hi, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to the Stanley Director Show. Tonight, we are indeed privileged to have as our guest the inimitable Hal Cantor. With credits on over 25 feature films and several hundred radio and television shows, the Emmy Award-winning Hal Cantor is a rarity in Hollywood. He writes scripts, produces them, and often directs the episodes. Hal has graced our lives in other mediums as well, Broadway, newspapers, books. He also drew cartoons. His humor and charm, along with his cutting-edge insight, draws laughter, praise, respect, and surely envy from the movers and shakers in the entertainment industry. Hal's contributions can only be lightly touched upon here. Let us not forget that it is his words which are the true cause of our laughter and tears when they come from the mouths of the famous. I consider myself lucky because I've seen Hal as a master of ceremonies also. He's the dean, the true master, the guru. Hal is topical and tells it like it is with such panache that the sacred cows of TV and politics don't realize that they've just had a sexual encounter. I wish writers in the future will never forget his courage, too. After all, it was Hal Cantor who set precedent by bringing to television the series about a black single mom, Julia, starring Diane Carroll to fruition. He was the executive producer on All in the Family. Hal won multiple Emmy Awards for, for writing. I, just too many to mention. Some other kudos are the Writers Guild of America West Patty Shayefsky Laurel Award and the Guild's Valentine Davies Award. Now, Mr. Cantor is not only listed in Who's Who in America, but so are the many famous talents he's created for. Here's a small, meager list of some of them. Bob Hope, Jack Benny, Bing Crosby, Danny Kaye, Don Amici, Groucho Marx, and it goes on and on. Some of Hal's films are Pocket Full of Miracles with Betty Davis and Glenn Ford and Peter Falk, Dear Bridget with James Stewart and Bridget Bardot, Blue Hawaii and Loving You, an Elvis Presley starrer, which Hal also directed, wrote, he did it all, Road to Ballet with Bing Crosby and Bob Hope, Let's Make Love with Marilyn Monroe, I Wish I Could Have, and Yves Montan, not with him, uh, the screen adaptation of Tennessee Williams' The Rose Tattoo, and the icing on the cake, Hal has a lovely wife, Doris, and three equally lovely daughters. Hal, now, we know Mo Mozart began composing at an early age. How do we know that? <laughs> well, I read it the other day while researching you. And you started writing professionally at 11 years old and getting paid for it. I mean, how did this come about? Well, Mozart uh, told me uh, as a young man, he <laughs> said, in order to uh, make a success in this world, he said, you got to start out as quickly and as soon as you possibly can. <laughs> so taking that uh, <laughs> in invite, uh, to advice, uh, no, actually, uh, I used to write uh, uh, Boy Scout news for the Miami Herald. Hmm. And uh, in those days, uh, every, every Sunday, the Miami mm -hmm. Herald had a whole page devoted to uh, scout troop news. Uh -huh. And uh, I uh, realized that the troop in my neighborhood was never represented. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was only 11 years old at the time. But I used to go to the uh, the meetings. Yeah. You had to be 12 to be a Boy Scout in those days. Right, right, right. I went to the meetings and made notes, then uh, wrote them up and submitted it to the Miami Herald. So the, the Herald used to print it every uh, Sunday, mm -hmm. for which I got uh, 50 cents a column. Wow. When I became 12, mm -hmm. I was able to join the Boy Scouts. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that uh, happened was they made me troop scribe. <laughs> now, as troop scribe, my duties were to submit uh, <laughs> a report on our troop activities to the Miami Herald oh. every su every Sunday. But as a uh, because I was a, a now a Boy Scout, right. I was not paid. So uh, mm. the fifty cents that I was getting over the years would uh -huh. have added up to I figure about. Uh, uh, $112 wow. <laughs> that, uh, blew by joining the Boy Scouts. Well, look, uh, Ernest Hemingway... Was, had, well, excuse, excuse me, yeah. you, you must admit, though, that's really pretty, uh, pretty uh, uh, 
a, a pretty interesting story, isn't it? I think it's a great story. I don't think so at all. No. I, <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think it was a boring story. No, I don't know no, why I, don't. I told it. No, well, it, it, because it helps me <laughs> oh, with my next question. Oh, all right. And the next I'm question sorry. is, look, yeah. Ernest Hemingway had Gertrude Stein to encourage him to get out of writing newspapers and to write novels. Yeah. Who was your mentor? Uh, Gertrude Stein, oh. same thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she, she told me to stop writing Boy Scout news <laughs> and start writing for radio. In other words, you were just born with uh, the ability to write? I mean, is this possible? Ev evidently. I think, I th I th you know, you learn to write as you go along. Mm -hmm. And I started learning when I was four. Well, Mozart so, but, composed that's it four right, years that, old. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there truly is a kindred spirit there. I think so, yes. But, <laughs> how? No, I mean, seriously, somebody had to kind of prod you, no? Well, I was always encouraged by my parents to, uh, to express myself in any uh -huh. way. Uh, well, all three of us kids were, ex uh, were taught to express ourselves. Uh -huh. uh, we uh, we uh, lived in a, uh, in a very comfortable uh, community. And, uh, that was in uh, Savannah, Georgia, right? Savannah, Georgia. Right. And from from Savannah, we went. To, we moved to uh, Miami, Florida. Uh huh. And it was in Miami that I started doing the uh, Boy Scout news. Oh. I was eleven. Mm -hmm. uh, eleven. Yeah. Wow. But I was an old man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> eleven. Yeah. I mean, your career has spanned uh, decades, of, and you have had uh, decades of success. Uh, you uh, wrote. When you were in World War II in the Army, right? Did yes. you write for? Well, I wrote before the before the war too, and then. Uh, yeah, during the war, uh, I was um, uh, attached finally to uh, Armed Forces Radio Service, mm -hmm. and uh, we went overseas, and uh, I did a lot of writing mm -hmm. uh, for Armed Forces Radio in, on Guam, and the Wetak, Iwo mm. Jima. Wow. And, and uh, from, well, you, you wrote for Olson and Johnson uh, before you went into the Army. That's true. They were doing a Broadway show called Hell's a Poppin', I believe. Hell's a Poppin', well, one of the long-running uh, shows of, uh, of that era. Mm -hmm. So uh, did that put you in good stead in the Army? I mean, what I'm getting at is when did you meet Bob Hope? In the Army. <laughs> I was, uh, I was uh, stationed at one point at Lowry Field, Colorado. Uh -huh. And uh, I was in the public relations office at Lowry Field. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bob came through uh, Lowry, and uh, he had a, a head writer named Al Schwartz. And Al, one of his jobs at that time was to get there early before the show, mm -hmm. a few days before the show, and uh, pick up as much local color as they possibly could get in order to put them in the put the local color into the scripts. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I was a, uh, at the Lowry Field Public Relations, they contacted me and asked me to come in and help. And I went into town uh, where uh, Bob was uh, in a suite at the Brown Palace Hotel mm -hmm. with uh, several of his other writers. And uh, I not only gave them uh, some local color, mm -hmm. I also suggested two or three jokes that uh, Bob enjoyed uh, enough to uh, Looked me up uh, uh -huh. when he came to uh, the Pacific. Really? And I was doing, I was running a radio station for Armed Forces Radio on uh, they call it WXLE on the road to Tokyo. Mm -hmm. This was in Anawitak. Wow. And uh, Bob showed up there mm -hmm. and uh, came over and did a, an interview uh, on the on the air, mm -hmm. just as we're doing now. Uh -huh. Only his was funnier. <laughs> well. I uh, but after the Army, then, uh, you had a connection with Bob Hope, right? That's true. Uh, but uh, after the Army, uh, I uh, came back to uh, California and uh, got into radio. Mm -hmm. And I was writing the uh, Bing Crosby radio show for De over De four Bingle? years. Bingle? Yes, Der Bingle, uh -huh. for over four years, five years. Uh -huh. And during that time, uh, Bob was a uh, frequent guest on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I worked for uh, Hope, mm -hmm. I worked for uh, Crosby, yeah. uh, anything that Crosby had, Bob wanted. 
<laughs> Real, they were really like the screen persona oh, yeah. that they portrayed. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were great, great friends, and, uh -huh. and they were wonderful people to be around. You know, mm -hmm. just what you saw on the screen was re really what you got mm -hmm. off screen. Mm -hmm. And um, when uh, uh, Bob's uh, producer was looking for an another writer to work mm -hmm. on a on the one of his scripts, a, a movie called mm -hmm. My Favorite Spy, they gave him a list, they gave him a list of writers uh -huh. and say, which one would you like? And he went down the list, he saw my name, he says, get him. And uh, I went over to Paramount and uh, uh -huh. did, uh, I think my, no, it was the second picture. I was mm -hmm. already doing a picture. I was doing a film at RKO called uh, Two Tickets to Broadway. Oh, wow. And uh, from, seemed, that, uh, yeah. from that I went to, uh, to do uh, my favorite spy, uh -huh. and uh, after that, Paramount put me on the contract, and I stayed there for about five years. They put you on the contract as yeah. a, a writer. Uh, as a writer, yeah. After after I'd uh, done the job, uh, uh, mm -hmm. did the uh, the job on uh, my favorite spy. Right. So, so did, did you segued into being a uh, director from uh, writing? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to, to, to uh, direct films, but mm -hmm. uh, I was doing rather well in films at the time. Mm -hmm. I was doing about three films a year, which was uh, That's a, an enormous amount. quite a lot. And at the same time, I was also still doing radio, mm. writing the, the Crosby show, uh -huh. part of that time. Right. Um, but uh, uh, where were we? Well, I, I was uh, getting to the point well, about of, of becoming a director. Of, yeah, a director. And I, I wanted to direct, and I, yeah. I studied a lot of uh, mm -hmm. directors and directing right. and, 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 and analyzing film and, and right. doing everything, pr trying to prepare myself as people do. Yeah. Who, who was like your favorite director, or who did influence you as a director? Uh, probably more than anybody else. There, there are two. Uh huh. Uh, Preston Sturgis. Oh, wonderful! The, the, uh, Sullivan's Travels. Right, and Billy Wilder. Ah, the great Billy. Right. Um, when I said I, when I asked the studio to give me a chance to direct, they said, uh, "We, uh, no, we can't, uh, we can't afford to do that." They said, "You, you, you make so much money as a writer, we can't put, we can't put an expensive writer, uh, 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 give a, uh, an expensive writer to a brand new director." I said, well, why don't I do a little, one, I'll write a little picture. They said, no, we can't do that. It was a, sort of a catch-22. Uh, so when an opportunity came to, for me to, uh, mm -hmm. to do the George Gobo show ah, yes. in, uh, in television, uh -huh. I, was, I was able to go uh, to, to, do the, to do that on one, I would, I would do the uh, on uh -huh. one proviso, yeah. that is that... Uh, I direct the show as well. Right. So uh, that was the deal I made. So I went in to produce, write, and direct the George Goebel. I, I understand. Show. Yeah, and you brought that show to such great prominence in America. The George Goebel show was the number one show in America, and you were, right. at yes, the sir. time, the number one guy in in, in that ball game. And uh -huh. and uh, I understand that. You wanted uh, some more uh, artistic control, was it, uh, of the Goebbels show? No, or, not or necessarily. I, I had all the, uh, I had complete artistic control up to a point. You know, as, as much as you can get in television, as long as there are sponsors and networks to uh, satisfy. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, uh, the second year of the show, my agent asked for some more money. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the people, the people who were, uh, the people who were uh, uh, in, in charge, charge in charge uh -huh. of George's career right. decided they didn't want to give me the money. So uh, my agent said we can do better elsewhere. Now, now we've got a, an opportunity to to, uh, to to make you a director in films. Uh -huh. So uh, I left the the Goebel show to direct my first uh, feature. Hmm. And that was a feature starring George Goebel. <laughs> Isn't that something? My, fav my favorite wife, yeah. Which was written by Goodman Ace. Oh, yeah. He, wasn't he a collaborator of yours at one time? Yes. I, I worked with Goody in uh, New York. Uh, when I got, got out of the Army, originally, mm -hmm. we were doing the Danny Kay radio show. Danny Kay on radio. Danny Kay on radio, yes. It, 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 
He was, he was very, very funny, uh -huh. if, if you could see him. <laughs> and not many people could see him on radio. So, so from there, th I mean, your career just took off as a triple threat, right? Writer, producer, director? Uh, well, I guess that's one way of putting it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Another way of putting it is it didn't take off. <laughs> well, it didn't take Look, you no, you no. Uh, wrote and directed Elvis Presley's uh, movie, Loving You, which I saw and I loved. I loved Blue Hawaii, too, but Loving You was really a very interesting film. It uh, is, indeed. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's probably, uh, I, modestly, I have to say, it's probably one of his, his better films. Mm -hmm. it, I'm, cer I'm certainly it's one of his better films. I would say it's his best film. Well, uh, Elizabeth Scott was wonderful in that movie. Yes, she was. And, and there was a young and lady. And so was Elvis. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, well, Elvis obviously was yeah. uh, was brilliant in that movie. He he was. He, you just got some wonderful things out of him. You really got him, the person, yeah. uh, out of the character. And also Dolores Hart was in That's that movie. Right. Dolores. Who I understand later became a nun. Mm-hmm. Uh, you understand correctly. She is to this day a nun. She's a mother superior, I believe, somewhere really? in Connecticut. Yes, isn't that something? And a, and a lovely, lovely lady. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, she was a wonderful, wonderful girl too. Mm -hmm. Well, careers. And most wonderful girls turn out to be lovely ladies. <laughs> Listen, I I I like to know uh, what was the toughest film you directed. The toughest film I directed. Yeah. Tough in what sense? Uh, in the sense of uh, what? I, I did mostly comedies, you know. Wait All a minute! Wait a minute! All I comedies. wait a minute, my friend. Yeah. Okay, that was directing. But, yeah. uh, uh, let me uh, shift gears and go into writing. You, Mr. Cantor, my dear guest, also wrote the screenplay for the Rose Tattoo, True. Tennessee Williams' great masterpiece. Mm -hmm. How did a comedy writer wind up writing? The Rose Tattoo. I was working at the time for Hal Wallace. I was on the contract to him, and mm -hmm. I had, uh, and uh, I had done a show, uh, a film for him earlier called uh, About Mrs. Leslie, which also was a drama, mm -hmm. and uh, he was impressed with that. Uh, what he didn't know, and what uh, a lot of people in Hollywood didn't know, is that at one point before I was doing comedy, I did drama. I did radio drama. Uh, but not, then I found out there was more money to be made in comedy than there was in drama, <laughs> so I switched. But uh, when I, after I did uh, uh, About Mrs. Leslie, uh -huh. then Hal saw me in a completely different light. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he brought in Rose Tattoo, mm -hmm. uh, he asked me if I'd like to take a crack at it. I said, absolutely, I'd, I'd love to. And uh, I did, and it turned out rather well. It was a wonderful film. Did, did you ever meet uh, Tennessee Williams? Oh, one? sure. We worked together, as a matter of fact. Yes. yes. Then, uh, uh, Tennessee, at one point, after the film was, uh, after it was all done, mm -hmm. uh, Danny Mann, who directed it, mm -hmm. was in New York with a print mm -hmm. before it opened. A rough cut, really. Mm -hmm. And he showed it to uh, Tom, to mm -hmm. Tennessee. Uh -huh. And uh, after the lights went up, uh, um, Danny told me, he said he has a, uh, had a big compliment for you. And I said, what's the compliment? He said, uh, the film, he said, the, the picture's great. He said, and the best scene is it in it. He said, it wasn't mine. Ah. I that. said, is that a compliment? I, he said, yes, he's talking about the, the scene that you had written mm -hmm. that uh, was not in the original show at all or mm -hmm. in the original play. Mm -hmm. That's just such a, a, a wonderful story. How, uh, uh, getting back to... It's not, a, it's, it's not a wonderful story to me because I said, the son of a bitch didn't even mention my name. <laughs> <laughs> he just said the best scene this wasn't his. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, how has the film and television industry changed since... Uh, the days you started out. I mean, uh, are there better things about it now or not so there, good There's some things that are better and a lot of things that are worse. But uh, like what, for instance? I, I just, just want to quote a line from uh, Izzy Diamond, I-A-L Diamond. 
Billy Wilder's collaborator. Yeah, brilliant collaborator, and, you know, uh -huh. a great, great screenwriter. Mm -hmm. But uh, as he said uh, uh, not too long ago, he said, uh, movies are not what they used to be, but why should I depress you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> I, uh, good movies used to have stories. I don't see stories on the screen anymore. Mm -hmm. Very seldom do I see a story. A little, uh, a lot of blood and uh, yeah. and tush and uh, yeah. and uh, other special effects. Special special effects. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, story has disappeared. Mm -hmm. uh, being the executive producer of All in the Family uh, and bringing Julia to television, yes. particularly. I mean, that had to be uh, some undertaking because of uh, our nation was not ready, uh, or obviously our nation became ready for Julia, but what, what were the problems that you faced? Uh, first of all, uh, the way Julia came about was that uh, Jack Valenti had a, a, a luncheon in Hollywood mm -hmm. with a, for a group of people to uh, meet and uh, listen to uh, uh, a gentleman named uh, Roy Wilkins mm -hmm. of the NAACP. Yes. And uh, he made a speech uh, to us about the, pro the plight of uh, the black person in America in, 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 in show business. Uh -huh. uh, they were called Negroes at that time. Uh -huh. um, and I was so impressed by what that man said that uh, I got home and thought, what can I do to help? Uh, other than make a contribution to the NAACP, which yeah. everybody at the, at the luncheon uh, uh -huh. probably did. And I thought, uh, maybe through comedy we can, we can achieve something. Mm -hmm. And I sat down and wrote uh, a pilot script. Is that right? Called it Mama's Man, it was called. Oh, really? Mama's Man. And uh, my agent uh, at the time, the great George Rosenberg, Mm -hmm. uh, took it to uh, NBC, mm -hmm. and uh, a man named Mort Werner, he said he loved it. He said, he said let's go. And uh, we, did a, uh, we did a pilot, but we had a lot of trouble casting it until we found the right woman. We, I don't know how many people we, uh, uh, read we auditioned, yeah. read for, and tested. Uh -huh. I went to New York and met an awful lot of black actors there, actresses. Mm -hmm. And we wound up, of course, with the ideal lady. Was, Wonderful. Uh, Diane. Yeah. That, and it made history. Yeah. And uh, it certainly did make history. And we had, uh, we had an awful lot of, uh, a lot, of, a lot of battles to get that on the air. And the, f the first uh, two or three shows, uh, there are certain stations in the South that wouldn't even carry the, the hmm. show hmm. Uh, until it became such an tremendous hit they were forced to put on the air. Uh -huh. that's, that's usually par for the course, isn't it? Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, do you, uh, did your years as executive producer of All in the Family, did, did, was that a very My, good experience? Let's, let's, uh, let's put the lie to that, not years, weeks. Weeks? Weeks, yeah. I spent, I think, uh, uh, less than a year. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Lear and I didn't get along too well. Oh, oh, I see. And uh, and I left uh, by I mutual see. consent. And, oh, okay. Uh, but I did. Uh, but I was very proud of the the six mm -hmm. shows that I did because we did uh, we did uh, some of the uh, the better shows mm -hmm. of the whole series that year. That was the mm -hmm. year that uh, Gloria got pregnant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, did I ask you? I yes, guess you I, did. I, I, I did ask you. Uh, y your favorite medium? Would you say that would be uh, film or television? As as an uh, artistic performer, not an autistic performer. Autistic. Um, <laughs> I would. Uh, I, I would think they were both. They're both equally satisfying when when they're working. When your work is is good, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with television, you can uh, get an instant reaction almost. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, from the time you, you, you do a show until it on, it's on the air, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it can be just a matter of weeks and you know immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, with a movie it takes sometimes a year before you uh, find out uh, whether you've uh, hit or missed. But uh, uh, 
Yeah, more well, time. Mo movies, yes. much, uh, much more leisurely, yes. Right. And uh, uh, although, the, again, movie business has changed so much. I don't know what it's like to, to make a movie now because mm -hmm. I haven't made one in several years. Mm -hmm. But when you work with Marilyn Monroe in yeah. Let's Make Love, uh, what, was that uh, an interesting experience on your part? Uh, or? It, it was, uh, yes, it was an interesting experience, but uh, I never met Marilyn, strangely enough. I, I worked mostly with uh, George Cukor, who was the director oh, of the show. right, right. Uh, started out working with uh, Jerry Wall, the producer, and uh -huh. then uh, Jerry usually would get a show started, and uh -huh. then he would turn it over to the director once he mm -hmm. got to a certain point. So I worked a lot with uh, him. Uh, that show uh, went through a lot of uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of variations. Right, right. It right, started right. out. I was writing. A, I was writing, rewriting a script that Norman uh, Norman Krasner had written, uh -huh. and I was adapting it now for uh, Marilyn Monroe uh -huh. and Gregory Peck. Oh, really? <laughs> then. Uh, <laughs> That's a long story. I, I, I will need uh, another show for that. You certainly would. But uh, it wound up from, from Gregory Peck mm -hmm. when he dropped out, then uh, Rock Hudson. Oh. Rock, was it Rock Hudson? Rock, yeah, yeah Rock. They, they couldn't go ahead with that. Mm -hmm. And finally wound up with uh, Eve Montaigne. Hmm. Well, wasn't bad. And each time it had yeah. to be rewritten. So I was, well. back. I was rewriting, rewriting, rewriting. The, do you enjoy the process of rewriting, by the way? Uh, it's easier than writing. It is. Rewriting, I think, yes. I mean, the creative process, uh, an idea comes to you and you just uh, uh, write it out? Is, is it as simple as that? Or do you, do you, do you toss an idea around? Oh, or, sure. Or, you, uh, you toss it around in your mind. And, and, and usually uh, you're working with a collaborator mm -hmm. quite often. And uh, there's a lot of give and, uh, give and take back and forth. Um, but there are all various various ways of approaching it. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can sit down uh, alone by yourself mm -hmm. and yeah. knock off a whole sequence that's uh, that's good, you know, right, that uh, right. that needs no yeah, uh, that needs no collaboration. Uh, uh, I mean, sometimes I've heard some collaborators they're at each other's necks. Uh, uh, yeah. They say, "I wrote well, that line." No, no, and that line stinks. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, those are mostly the husband and wife collaborations. I think. Probably. Uh, there's also uh, Gilbert and F Sullivan, you know, who didn't talk to each other for what? How many years? Yeah, yeah a long time. You know, Hal, our uh, show is wrapping up. I mean, this half hour already? has gone already? tremendously, but I want to keep talking with you. I just want to say. Bye-bye, folks. This wonderful man, Hal Cantor, a great gentleman and a very special guest who I'm going to try and con him into coming back at another time if I pay him enough money, that is. <laughs> it, it's, been a, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Why, Hal, this is a great mutual admiration society. Uh, well, I didn't finish my sentence. Oh, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I want to ask you, I don't know if we'll be on camera, but would you have any advice to give anybody? Uh, yes. Uh, what? About what? About, <laughs> about I, writing? That's good. Yeah. About writing, yeah. yeah. Well, the best, of, the best advice you can give any writer is yeah. write. Don't talk about writing, write. Uh, yeah. uh, most most older writers drive the younger dr writers crazy by giving them advice, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. all of which they don't accept themselves. 